Hey everybody, welcome to Cut Transform Glue. In this week's video, I'm gonna finish the repair robot diorama build. To be more specific, I'll work on the mechanic, the human engineer, and also I'll make the power cable that connects to the repair robot. I'll also add some final details to the base and to the robot. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Let me begin by showing you guys how I made the human figure of this project. In this case, it is a female engineer. I like to always have a human figure on my dioramas because I think it adds a sense of scale to the thing. And as all my previous projects, this diorama is on the 1 to 20 scale. I'm using this anatomy reference print to guide me in the process of creating this skeleton of this human figure. I'll begin by mixing some epoxy putty and then I'll make these thin warm shaped things right here to serve as the bones of the figure. And as my print is on the right scale, I'm using it to create the exact dimensions of each bone of the body. I'll also use the epoxy putty to create the hips and then the rib cage and a tiny little ball for the head. And I'm always laying out the bones on the paper so that I get the exact dimensions and I don't make the human figure that's bigger than the intended scale. To keep all these bones together and also to make the figure to be able to be posed, I'm using this copper wire. And while the epoxy putty is not totally set yet, I'm pre-drilling the holes for it. And of course this was done on every bone of the human figure. Once the epoxy body was set in a couple of hours, I could start assembling the body with the copper. This is a long and tedious job of testing and cutting each copper wire to the precise dimension. Also, some of the bones had to be drilled again. But then I ended up with this skeleton that can be posed and matches perfectly the human figure size that I want. Now what I'm gonna do is to pose the figure on the diorama and then start sculpting it. And when it comes to the pose of this human figure here, I'm not going for a complex or heroic pose. I'm kind of looking for a natural pose and so it can be boring but this is just my personal preference I like to create scenes that look believable so this is what I'm doing here I'm kind of just looking for a pose of an engineer checking his tablet and looking for the maintenance of the robot so this right here is the final pose of the engineer and I always like to do a human figure standing on one leg and kind of distributing the, the weight of the body like naturally and with that decided I could mix some more epoxy putty to attach it to the joints of the body and make the pose like firm and sturdy Now 
Now I'm gonna start the sculpting process of the figure. For that I'm gonna use my Dremel tool with this collection of drill bits, also some diamond coated bits. In a process of adding epoxy putty, waiting for it to set and then sculpting it and then repeating this process over and over. And for that I made this time lapse right here because I think it's a better way to show you guys the transformations that it went through. I know this went by quickly, but in reality this took me like 3 to 4 days to complete. It's not shown on the photos, but I added the tablet using a thin acrylic sheet To create a way to attach the human figure to the base of the diorama, I made a hole in the feet and then I glued a plastic shaft on it. Now I applied the first coat of primer, the surface is really rough at this point because the epoxy didn't have the perfect finish but that's what the primer is for so I grabbed some sanding paper and then I started giving it the sanding that it needed to reach the texture that I wanted and this is a long process, it takes a lot of time but the results make it all worth it. There are some tiny details on this piece, so the sanding has to be super careful and with light hands. After a couple of hours of sanding, I feel like I reached the texture that I wanted and then I could apply the final coat of primer on this figure. I'm really happy with the result, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't feel like my human figures are that good and I really need to work on that in the future. But now that this is done, I just had to make a hole on the base and attach the human figure to it and check the overall scene. So this is the scene, the engineer is there checking her tablet and now I just gotta work on some other stuff and this diorama is complete. Now that other thing is the power cable. I'll add a power cable attached to the arm of the robot. This will make the robot look like it's being recharged or something like that, but also this power cable will give support to the robot and make the diorama more sturdy and resistant. So the first thing that I gotta do is to cut the cable to the desired length but of course in this part of the process I'm leaving me some room for error. But before I figured out the quote unquote poles of the cable, I went in my box of griblis and I grabbed some pieces to create the structure that connects to the arm of the robot. After some browsing, I decided on these pieces right here and I'll start gluing them together right now. This is the piece that connects to the arm of the robot and to do that I glued these two metal shafts right here that connects precisely to the holes on the arm of the robot. This black rubber cable that I'm gonna use as the power cable for the robot is too shiny in my opinion. So before I used that on the diorama, I gave it some sanding with sanding paper to remove most of the shininess of it.
as you can see by comparison it is really really shiny and I think this doesn't help with the scale of the diorama so now that it's all sanded up and looks way better I can start working on the poles of this cable As I left myself some room, now I can pose the cable and cut the excess. Now I know some of you might be wondering how we supposed this flexible cable to give structure to the diorama. I'll do that by adding this 1.5mm steel rod on the inside of this rubber cable. As I said, this will add structure to the diorama, but also it can help the cable to keep a pose. I'll start by gluing it to the connector that plugs on the arm of the robot, and then I'll put the rubber cable over it. I'll also add some CA glue to the connector so that the rubber can't go anywhere. It's not shown on video, but in the other end of the rubber cable, I'll have a piece of plastic keeping the steel rod centered. Now that I have this rubber cable stiff and strong, I can start posing it. This was a hard job, it took me a long while to reach the desired pose. As this wire is really stiff and strong, I had to remake the connector on the base. For that I added some more MDF laser cut pieces and added some steel to give it more structure. So this is the final shape of the power cable, it is connecting nicely to the connector on the base. I had to remake some of the pieces but that's okay, because I feel like this piece will really add to the scene, but also make the diorama more resistant and give some support to the weight of the robot. As a final touch, and also to make the connector on the base stronger, I added this paint steel rod to it and with some CA glue this connector is pretty strong now. Now some of you might remember that from this connector comes a black cable that goes on this tiny window right there and I decided to change the cable. It was a single one that was too stiff and I decided to go with these two power cables right there that are easier to be bent so I just had to make this new connector piece right here and then it was all good as you can see it does a better job on bending through that tiny window but it keeps looking cool so I'm happy with it And this concludes the build of the diorama. Now the only thing left is to paint this thing. I'm really happy with it and I feel like I reached a new level when it comes to scale and the amount of details. If you haven't seen the previous videos on this project, I really suggest you check them out. I'll put the link on the end of this video. If you like the content, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you want to go one step further, there's a coffee account linked in the description box. But this is it for this video and as always, thanks for watching.